Foldy bendy phones have been all the rage for quite a while now, but it's taken until 2020 for us to finally get some proper compact models on the go. Motorola smashed out of the gates first with its rather seductive reimagining of the classic Razer, but it's sadly a case of style over substance. And so up steps Samsung to kick Moto square in the crotchal region and put it to shame with the seriously impressive Galaxy Z Flip, which boasts premium performance, a bigger battery and some very clever tech indeed. Now I got my greasy mitts all over the Galaxy Z Flip at last night's big Samsung Galaxy Unpacks event and so far I'm definitely liking it indeed. And this is coming from someone who wasn't really a massive fan of that Samsung Galaxy Fold which let's face it was a bit of a brick. So here's my full in-depth thoughts so far on the Galaxy Z Flip, everything you need to know and for more on the latest and greatest tech please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers. So in its folded form, the Galaxy Z Flip is a super compact delight, just like the Motorola Razr phone. It's 74mm wide, 87mm tall and 17.3mm at its thickest point. So basically you can stuff it wherever you like, within reason of course. And at 183 grams, it's got a decent heft, but I certainly wouldn't describe it as heavy. Now the flip will come in a choice of purple, black or, if you're an 80s rapper, a bit of blingtastic gold. But that last variant will apparently only be available in select regions, not exactly a massive shocker. My only bugbear with the design so far is the standard issue with glossy smartphones, namely I had to constantly buff the thing on my shirt to wipe away smudges. Even on these dark models, your smudgy greasy prints will show up all too easily. Now when the Samsung Galaxy Z Flip is full it up, you have a dinky 1.1 inch cover display to stay notified. And this AMOLED screen is absolutely tiny, literally just about big enough to show the time and a couple of little icons and not much more. It's a far cry from the spacious external display on the Motorola Razr and of course Samsung's own Galaxy Fold. It would definitely be nice to have a more spacious display to really let those notification alerts breathe and certainly if you get a lot of messages and other things pinging in all throughout the day it won't be much help at all. But still I guess like an always on display Display, at least it won't be sapping much power, so that's good news on the battery life front. And that cover display is also perfectly sharp and bright, so everything appears nice and clear. Now, anyone hoping for a satisfying flip motion may be quite disappointed. The Galaxy Z Flip's hinge is quite a stiff affair, so it doesn't pop open in one smooth, joyous motion. Although there is actually a reason for this, which I will touch on in a bit. Now, I found that the Z Flip was still perfectly possible to open with one hand when needed, although it wasn't exactly an easy affair, and I was ever so slightly petrified of dropping the thing when doing so. Still, it definitely feels like a well-constructed hinge, so hopefully it should prove nice and durable over time. Now a big concern with the Motorola Razr smartphone is how much muck can infiltrate that bendy fold and hinge mechanism and that's an issue that hopefully Samsung has addressed with a special fibre guard here on the Galaxy Z Flip which just helped to trap any dust and other crap that's trying to infiltrate that little space. Now once you pop the phone open chances are you'll be impressed by that gorgeous dynamic AMOLED screen. It's a Full HD Plus panel rather than Quad HD like the new Galaxy S20 phones but I found that video and pics look perfectly sharp in my hands-on session and it's certainly both bright and punchy as well with the usual customization options on offer. But no, there's no 120Hz refresh rate or 240Hz touch response rate here on the Galaxy Z Flip. You'll have to upgrade yourself to the Galaxy S20 smartphones for a bit of that sexy screen tech. The Samsung's 6.7 inch foldable display matches the S20 Plus for size and eclipses Motorola Razr's 6.2 inch effort so you get a spacious panel for enjoying all your media. While that stretched aspect ratio is definitely well suited to modern movies. Now that screen is actually constructed from ultra thin glass rather than plastic and yes you can see that central crease when you tilt the phone away from your face but when viewed head on it's thankfully pretty invisible. However you certainly can feel that crease when you're running your fingers across the panel which is a bit weird and kind of off putting as well, but hopefully it's something that you'll just kind of adjust to and get used to over time. Of course, there's no headphone jack on the Z Flip, so it's Type-C dongles or Bluetooth all the way for your music needs. Now that stiff hinge action on the screen means that you can basically bend Samsung's smartphone to almost any angle and it will stay put and doing so activates a kind of split screen mode in supported apps. So for instance you can watch a YouTube video on the top half while perusing the delightful comments in the bottom half. Now, this should prove really really handy for something like Skyping for instance you can just like bend the phone so that selfie camera is pointing right at your mug and then set the Galaxy Z Flip down on a counter while you're chopping your spuds or doing whatever else. That'll hopefully put an end to awkwardly propping up your smartphone on a can of kidney beans and shit.
like that. As for the rest of the UI, well it basically seems like standard Samsung. You get the fresh new One UI version 2.0 slathered on top of Android 10 and this gives you the usual shenanigans like a dark mode, gesture navigation, a one-handed mode which proves quite helpful and so on. However, while Samsung has undoubtedly crammed a lot of clever tech into the Galaxy Z Flip, take note that there is no fingerprint sensor on board so you're stuck with the likes of face recognition or pin entry instead. Now I've taken a much closer look at all these software smarts in my full Samsung One UI version 2.0 launcher tips and tricks guide so go check that out for all you need to know. As for performance, well that's one area where the Galaxy Z Flip definitely smashes the new Motorola Razr as well. You get one of Samsung's fresh new Exodus chipsets just like the S20 phones backed by 8 gigs of RAM. The performance certainly seems absolutely super smooth in my hands on session and hopefully the latest games will play absolutely no problem even on top detail levels with a blistering frame rate. And yep that game launcher tool is once again back on board and you have 256 gigs of storage for all of your apps but sadly there is no room for micro SD memory card support. Now one of the major pain points with the Motorola Razr smartphone was sadly the lackluster battery life. It only had space for a 2500 milliamp cell which isn't enough for all day play but hopefully that's something that Samsung has managed to sort out by cramming a mighty 3300 milliamp battery inside of the Galaxy Z Flip. With one hour of constant play the Z Flip's battery life seems to drop around 14% so if you're not always on your phone I reckon you will make it through a full day but of course stay tuned for my full review for the final verdict on that. And when it's time to charge back up you do get full wireless charging support with the Qi standard here on the Samsung Galaxy Z Flip as well as the standard 15 watt fast charging as well. Now slapped on the back of the Samsung Z Flip you get a dual lens camera a 12 megapixel lens with f1.8 aperture and optical image stabilization backed by another 12 megapixel ultra ultra wide angle lens. Swapping between the two is easy enough all you gotta do is tap these on screen icons and the photo quality seems perfectly respectable for my hands on session even when you're battling fierce demo room lighting. You've got a comprehensive selection of camera modes to play around with too, pretty much the same selection as the S20s. So for instance you've got the all new single take mode which can capture a wide variety of photos and video clips using both of those lenses at once. And fan favourites like the night mode and of course the obligatory food mode do make a return. Swap to video capture and you can record it up to 4k resolution at either 30 or 60 frames per second with full pro controls if you like as well and while you can shoot at the standard 16 by 9 aspect ratio you can also flip reverse it to shoot at 9 by 16 instead there's a 10 megapixel f 2.4 selfie camera built into that mighty screen in a central pinhole housing and again this is fully featured you can shoot portrait photos or even live focus video although this didn't seem to do too much in our hands-on session and speaking of video you can once again capture footage at up to 4k resolution at 30 or 60 fps with that selfie snapper Bananarama. Now somewhat hilariously you can also take selfies with that primary camera as well using the weenie external display as a kind of viewfinder. Again this is a feature already found on the Motorola Razr. However you may have to squint a bit though if your eyes are as shot as mine as this really is a minuscule panel and it only gives you a very vague idea of whether you're basically pointing those lenses in the right direction. Still it does undoubtedly work just double tap the power button to activate it and then press again to snap away. So right, there's my full hands-on early impressions of the Samsung Galaxy Z Flip. As you can see I think as far as compact bendy phones go this one could well be a winner and what we were all kind of hoping that the Moto Razr could be. But what's your own personal thoughts? Are you tempted by the Z Flip? It is of course a pricey wee bugger coming in around the grand and a half marks you'll definitely have to have pretty fat stacks in order to actually afford one. Boo. But anyway please do slap your comments down below and please do poke subscribe and do that notifications bell as well for more on the latest and greatest tech. Cheers everyone, love you.